Um, just that at the Valentine's party, his teacher talked to me that, um, and just said that since he's gotten the hearing aids, he participates more in class and answers questions. And he used to stand back and watch what the other kids do and then would start doing what they did. And now he just hears the teacher and follows her directions and starts doing what he's supposed to do. Now. Right. And kids have been nice. Kids have been okay. Um, no he, issues with the other kids. They read the book at school and he took his little Otacon Baron and I don't think that he hasn't said anything about anyone even noticing them. So other than that, he's got something cool and blue in his ears. And so. they don't. Yeah. Yes. That's great. Yeah, they do. And at home, you've noticed a difference? He's not quite as loud anymore. Oh, TV's gone down. TV's gone down. Volume's <laughs> gone down. Um, I don't have to yell at the top of my lungs when he's yeah. in his room to get his attention. Let's yeah. watch he just hears house. me, yeah. Can you tell me, as a mother, why you fought so hard to make sure he got his hearing aids? Um, because I, I want to be able to give him every advantage and not being able to like he starts kindergarten next year and I know that there's going to be enough struggles in general at school and hearing shouldn't be one of them and so I want him to be able to hear what the teacher has to say and what the teacher is teaching and to understand the content and be able to make friends and um I'll sit still and just have everything that a normal, I mean, he's normal, but a, fit, a completely able child would have, so, and that gives it to him. <laughs> he's, so he's very dramatic. <laughs> so, if, if these guys are starting to work with our nonprofit yes. from Fort Wayne, mm -hmm. and they're putting a ton of time and energy mm -hmm. just to help people, I mean, really, yes. just like Noah, um, so. like, for you, is that something, and I don't even have to record this, but is that something that you could see yourself maybe becoming a volunteer for? Yeah, because there's nothing. There's nothing. There's like one, totally there was too. one place that the Ability Center was able to refer me to, but they only went with like one or two audiologists in the greater Toledo area. And I didn't want to switch. Yeah. Like, and I go. even think you might even get refurbished. I don't even know what they yeah. get. They, like it, and it was, and then all everything else was like a very long, lengthy process. There was nothing, even the B, like I think, it, I don't know if I can talk about it, but the VCMH, I finally heard back from them. I told you it was a long I applied, process. And then they sent me another application for something else, and they're like, well, you yeah. have to apply for Medicaid and all this other stuff first, and I'm like, we don't call, you know, like we yeah. don't qualify for Medicaid. What do I? Yeah. And so it was. So it's a long. A lot process. of hoops to jump through to get him this. Let's take your quote. That's what we were discussing. I said, you know, there. you could wait to see what BCMH says, or, you know, we can help you out. Yeah. And that's why she took the initiative to do the GoFundMe. Um. To do her part, and you know, we did our part, so. It, and it worked out for Noah yeah. and for all of us. He's not waiting on hearing aids. That wouldn't be near as nice, honestly. So it all worked out. Yeah. But there, there's nothing. There's, no there's nothing here. No. That's awesome. So how does that make you? Let me just get you really quick. How does that make you feel as an audiologist to know that you're directly involved with helping kids? I mean, like this Noah? is. This right here is why I became an audiologist. I mean, helping someone like Noah and Angela get him hearing and just seeing the improvement, it just, it, it's why I'm here. This is, this is why I do this. This is, it, it just makes my day. It just makes me, I can't, I come home like, guess what I did today? 